Hi, Lynn, how are you doing this afternoon? I'm doing great. It's such a pleasure to be here, everyone, with uh, Dr. Lynn Glazier-Goldie from Miramichi, New Brunswick. Thank you so much, Tiffany, for having me this afternoon. It's a pleasure to, to, to see you and speak with you. So Lynn, for those that don't know you, can you just tell us a little bit about what you do and what your practice is like now in Miramichi? Well, I'm a licensed chiropractor and um, I started my practice in 2000. And upon graduation, I opened up my own clinic and I've been in practice now for 20 years. And it's going by really quickly. So um, it was roughly uh, in 2014 that I decided to take extra training and become a certified wellness practitioner and uh, expand my knowledge on, on lifestyle changes for patients. So, you know, Lynn, that's funny because we both graduated 2000. I didn't realize that. And I think it was around 2014 as well that I started training more in functional medicine. So, um, so tell me what it was like for you to get your certificate and what really kind of led you to want to take a certificate in, in health and wellness. Well, I had been in practice for, like I said, 14, 14 years. And there were patients that did great with chiropractic care. They were within, usually we have a, a treatment plan of 12 sessions and they go through uh, the four weeks of care. And, you know, most of the time oh, we'd see, you know, it's chiropractors who see great results, increased mobility, range of motion, but there were um, patients that weren't doing so well. And we, and it was drastically, um, you know, noticeable that they weren't doing well. And we would see maybe, I would see maybe 10, 15% improvement, which, which doesn't really, um, it didn't, I didn't quite understand that. So um, I have a friend, Dr. James Chestnut, and he developed a um, certification, wellness certification program for chiropractors. And it's divided into uh, three modules, a nutrition module, a fitness module, and a uh, state of mind module. So uh, in 2014, I decided to do that uh, wellness certification. And the first module was nutrition. And I remember the speaker, he put up um, a picture of a donut with the icing and everything. And of course, you know what seminars are like, they have lots of cookies and sweets. And, and of course, in the back of the room, it was loaded with all kinds, like there was fruit, but there was also the pastry. And then he also had a picture of a green apple. And he said, by the end of this weekend, you will want that apple. He said, most of you, when you're looking at that photo, you're, you, you all want the donut. I know you all want the donut. And I was, just, I was thinking, I want that donut. I truly want that donut. Because Tiffany, I did grow up with lots of sugar in my diet. I'm gonna admit my mom was, she's still a great cook. And um, I think at that time, that's how they showed us love. I mean, I had loving parents, but to further show love, they baked and they made pies and swears and cookies. And uh, for me, um, I became quite attracted to that food. I mean, I did eat other food, but um, you know, patients would bring by sweets to the office. But what I was noticing with myself, and it probably happened, um, I was noticing with myself and as well with my patients that I would have sugar and I would, or I could be tired and I would have something to eat like a square or cookie that maybe patients would bring by, uh, especially around Christmas time. And then I would be so tired afterwards within 20 minutes and I'd have to have some coffee. And I thought, Hey, this is just a constant up and down, up and down on my energy. And then, um, I, so I was noticing that in myself that I was becoming very carbohydrate sensitive and I would probably be um, in my late thirties by then. And then I was also noticing in my practice as I went along that some patients did really well and other, other patients, there was not much change. So then I uh, became aware of this program um, that taught chiropractors about nutrition and how that influences health and fitness and how that influences health and of course state of mind and how that influences health and it was in three modules and um, it was pretty intense it was um, 
seminars that you had to attend and there was uh, essays you had to write and there was actually a written exam on top of that. So um, I don't regret it. It's it trend from through that experience. I came home that weekend after the nutrition seminar. I said to my husband, Ryan, I said, that's it. We're not eating rice or grains anymore. He said, okay. And he's a chef. And he said, he didn't question me. He just thought, thought that I was doing it for our best interest. And we went off uh, all grains right away. And Tiffany, there isn't one system of my body that did not respond well. Every system of my body changed. Um, gosh, uh, it was drastic. So um, then once I went through all the modules, uh, I have a, a degree in uh, sports science. So I always was familiar with fitness and exercise and it's a big part of my life. So I had I already was doing that with my patients. Now the state of mind module, that was quite interesting. And um, I, you know, we're all familiar with those patients who have depression and anxiety. And we noticed that how they hold themselves, like their posture and how they carry themselves um, is, is unique. You can tell when somebody's not mentally feeling well, they have the physical signs. And so um, the, the module in state of mind helped us recognize those patients who are just not mentally feeling well. And that those negative thoughts, that self-judgment is creating a stress response in the body. And so, as you know, once that stress loop is created, um, you have inflammation and chronic pain. So, um, now with all my patients, uh, I try to um, get them to go off grain, dairy, and legumes even, um, even some nightshade vegetables, because I'm noticing when they go off of the grains and dairy, uh, they're still having some sensitivities. So uh, there's, there's everyone, there's, some fine tuning that needs to be done with some patients. But once they realize when they at least go off the bread and the grains, a lot of their joint pain goes away. And as chiropractors, the most common reasons why people come see us is headaches, neck pain, and back pain. And we know through research that spinal adjustments or in spinal manipulation that we do in our practices does work. Um, but why is it not working for everybody? So that's when we get into um, those patients who have heightened sensitivity to perhaps gluten and sugar uh, and dairy. And as well, maybe those patients mentally aren't feeling that well and perhaps they need to support that way. And perhaps they're not also moving enough. So all of those three um, factors, lifestyle factors, have, have a direct influence on how well they're doing physically, um, mentally, and uh, yeah, how, just how they're doing in general. Well, Lynn, that is a huge mouthful, and it sounds like you and Ryan did so much, like in your own personal life, for transformation, but maybe we can break, break those segments down a little bit more. So uh, maybe if you want to talk about um, the one from the, the, the mindset, you know, and the people, how do you apply that then to your patients? Because that's often what people want to know. So like, what kind of guidance would you give them if they come in with, you know, a negative attitude? I'm never going to get better. I'm, my back's been sore for all of my life. What are some little tips and things that you do or how do you work with them now? Well, um, I say healthy mind, healthy body. And truly, for your mind to be well, you need to be putting, giving the body what it needs to be healthy nutritionally. I, Tiffany, I truly believe that for your mind to be healthy, we need to give the body the nutrients it needs. And greens, vegetables, um, uh, even start like the starchy vegetables, I'd be cautious with that, especially with leaky gut and 
patients with gut dysbiosis, I would definitely just encourage them to eat the low starch vegetables, um, fresh fiber first. If you want that um, bag of chips or those French fries, have your salad first, have your vegetable first, fresh fiber first. Um, so that, that patient that comes in that needs help in all those areas, nutrition, um, mental support, and needs to be moving more, I, I would just ask them to start with one vegetable a day and pick anything, pick one vegetable and you don't even have to cook it. You can eat it raw. <laughs> um, try to wake. So that's nutritionally. That's what I would recommend for fresh fiber first. I love these phrases, Lynn. So I'm writing this down and I'm going to like pop this out. Like, you know, fresh, you know, fresh fiber first and one first. veggie a day. You're right. Because sometimes people get overwhelmed with too many suggestions at once. Yeah. And it, it also, it's surprising how many people don't even eat vegetables. Like, they don't need any. So your suggestion of one is a very good starting yeah. point. And read it raw, like even if it's a carrot. So if you want those French fries, have that raw carrot first. Or even a fruit, like um, fr like an apple would be a better choice than the chocolate bar. So if you want that Snickers chocolate bar, have your fruit, have your apple first. And if you, when you eat the apple, then have your taco bar. <laughs> so, um, I, I, yes, I don't, um, you don't want to overwhelm patients because they are coming in not feeling well and knowing what I know now about nutrition, state of mind and active, like knowing how important activity is. So nutritionally, I would recommend fresh fiber first, just pick any vegetable, just have that one serving a day. So that's adding in. Now the taking away is very difficult. So I don't, I don't uh, force that too much because they love their bread, they love their muffins. Um, that can be really uncomfortable for them to take that away. If anything, I'll say maybe a day on, day off, like have your bread one day and then don't have it the next day. Um, but it, it is a challenge for them to give up the processed carbohydrate. The second tip would be if it has more than one ingredient, don't eat it. So an apple is an apple, a carrot is a carrot, a slice of bread has, I think, four or five ingredients. So uh, often they're confused about, okay, well, what can I eat or what can't I eat? So I usually say if it's got more than one ingredient, you can't you should not have it. So, um, so that would be the second tip. Um, I do recommend, um, I think that's pretty much nutritionally. I try to keep it quite simple. Um, and what, what have you seen? Like, so when the patients, like, you know, you said physically you felt so much better and I've seen it in patients before, how quickly do they come back to you the ones that do kind of start reducing the sugars and the breads and say, Hey, Dr. Goldie, I'm like feeling better now. Four days. Four days. Four days. Yes. And so I usually say 90 days for, for, for the body to, uh, to mate, to um, adjust to the new kind of lifestyle. Because I'll often see patients three times a week for four weeks when they're first starting, and if they're really gung ho and they're really they're really ready to make the, the change, they'll notice a change within four like the third. Like if I'll see them on a Thursday and they come back on a Tuesday, they notice a change. They notice the bloating's not as bad. They're sleeping better. They have better clarity, and they just they just on it. They usually bread is the first thing they give up. And, and when I mention it to them, they'll say, yeah, when I have bread, I, my belly is so bloated. And I, I, I said, well, how do you feel when your stomach is, is bloated like that? I, how does your mind feel? So they said, well, I have no energy and I have a hard time thinking. And I said, yeah, we refer to that as brain fog and it's inflammation. 
of the neural tissue. And um, once, you, once you start reducing those foods that can cause gut inflammation, your whole system will improve. So then getting back to the patient who also has depression, who is, um, is they have chronic pain, I, for exercise, they just ask them to walk, just walk. And to try to prescribe specific, a specific gym or a fitness program, Tiffany, it, it usually is overwhelming for them. So what I notice is, especially for chronic back pain, if they just go out and move, they feel better. And even if they will say, say, what if I have pain? Oh, I have pain when I first start walking. I'll say, walking is analgesic, meaning when you start walking, you may have pain, but after you start moving, the pain will go away. And sure enough, it does after 20 minutes. So, and then the third part, um, so fitness would be the walking. Oh, uh, sorry. The first part would be like a little stretch routine in the morning, just like a self-care. So I encourage like a uh, little stretch routine in the morning when, when they get up, refer to as self-care, and then walk. And then the third part would be meditation. So they begin to just sit, find a quiet place at home, light a candle, um, maybe burn some incense, and sit in a chair and close their eyes. If they can only do it for a minute, that's fine. Because that, uh, it's just going to take time. It's, it's, not, it's something like that does not happen right away. You, for, you to, for someone to sit for five minutes um, can be very difficult. So I'll, I'll, just, I'll just ask them to start with one minute and only focus on the breath. And when they have thoughts that come in that um, are causing them to be uncomfortable or they feel anxious, I'll ask them to go back to the breath again. So it's common when they're learning to control the mind or not control the mind, but um, know their mind. Allowing. Oh, know their mind. Know they have restlessness in the mind and accept that and then let it go. So it's important that they, they know who they are, they know their mind and then learn to accept the thoughts and, and the feelings that they have and then try to let and let them go. And how you let them go is you go back to the breath. But and that but that takes time because it, sometimes the patient can sit for a while and go through their mind about certain scenarios or stressful um, circumstances in their life. And most of the time, Tiffany, it's things that they have no control over anyway. Exactly. And the thing is, I tell people they have to practice this too because, you know, like yourself, you know, when we when any of us start to do this in the beginning, it's not easy. It's not easy to sit there and be still and pay attention to your breathing. Like your thoughts just keep going again and again, but it's that daily continuous practice that will bring you to that more relaxed state. Sets and reps, just like training your biceps or those quad, your quads, your calves, you know, just get those muscles like that. And your brain, I explained the patient is a muscle and it requires sets and reps. And uh, it just takes time to, to, uh, to develop your mind. And healthy, like I said, healthy mind, if you can have a peaceful mind, your body will be at ease. But in order to have that peaceful mind, the sugar, you need to, you need to address that issue with the sugar addiction. Because if you're eating, eating those carbohydrates that are refined, it's going to stimulate and aggravate the mind and create anxiety. And how I usually try to get patients off sugar is I try to introduce the healthy fats like avocado, almonds, nuts and seeds, flax, chia seeds, and do 
I have a little morning pudding recipe. I know you have lots of recipes in your program too. Mine's quite simple. I, I just, I have a little morning pudding that I recommend as flaxseed, chia seeds, MCT oil, coconut butter, a little bit of cocoa chocolate in there. And it has quite a bit of calories, but it's very keto, it's low carb, and um, it, it sustains the, the person throughout, throughout the morning. And if they do their, their meditation in the morning, they're going to, it's going to help the mind be calm and relaxed. So if you're starting your day with a croissant or a pancake with uh, icing and, and sugar and things like that, like corn syrup, you're, you're not going to feel well at all within minutes after eating that. And then if you try to meditate on top of that, so again, getting back to the nutrition being then the really try to introduce something healthy right away as soon as you get up and then uh, do your self-care stretching maybe go for a little walk and then do something for your mind just just uh, be still and at least for maybe uh, two minutes or a minute and then then carry on with the rest of your day so, it's so that's, wonderful those are the little tips i try to try to uh, teach my patients because again, Lynn, you know, we, we learn so much, right, in healthcare. You know, we learn so much, like you, the physical body. For me as a physician, it's, it's often about medications. But when we look at the body as a whole, it is mind, it is body, and it is spirit, you know. And we have to get all that practice right to try to get, you know, help patients to get them on that path toward wellness. So it sounds like an amazing program and, and that you really applied all those principles into your practice and your personal life, too. I, yes, I, um, you know, I, um, I practice what I preach 100%. And, and because, because I do that, Tiffany, I could come across with integrity and certainty with all my patients. Because I used to be addicted to sugar. I used to love that donut. I love those blueberry pies my mom made. Um, she still makes them. Um, but I, and I won't, I won't have it. And, and for me, alcohol is another thing too. Um, you know, I feel the, you know, with, with, um, certain spirits, you know, I, I just, because you become so, um, detox almost with the nutrition and the meditation and, and the exercise when you, for me, when I put something like that in, I just don't feel well and I'm 51 now. So. To me, the body is a vehicle for the spirit. And it is, it is, to, it is to carry you throughout your lifetime. And uh, we, we, don't, we can't get spare parts. Um, and we, we can't re really, it's not a good idea to take anything out because we do need it. <laughs> and if we, I believe that self heals self. And if we take the time to make these lifestyle choices, we, we can see these changes because the default for the human body is health, is healthy. We, are, we were born complete and perfect, really. As, and most children are. Uh, there are the congenital illnesses that we see, but they're, they're quite rare. And 96% of illnesses are acquired. There are, they are through lifestyle. And so we are born uh, whole and perfect. At some time in our lives, we, we get exposed to certain stressors, and um, it, then we become, uh, we don't feel as well, we feel uncomfortable, either menta mentally, uh, so then, well, I would say most of the time mentally, so then when we feel uncomfortable mentally, then we look for pleasure, so we either look to certain foods, sweets, or certain other carbohydrates or we turn to substances like alcohol or recreation drugs so uh, thankfully i didn't i didn't go that route myself but uh, we all have experienced alcohol like most of it have most of us have but i know now that i i when i'm on when i'm on this path spiritually and physically uh it doesn't really fit anymore in my lifestyle and I all I care about is uh being well and I'm, I know I'm here to serve 
I know I'm here to serve humanity and choosing to be a chiropractor um, was, it's, it's my, it's my journey. It's my, it's my uh, way to serve humanity and uh, I'm, I'm enjoying it thoroughly, thoroughly. Oh, it's so wonderful to hear you talk, Lynn, you know, because to hear about kind of the journey, but as you speak about, you know, children and how we are brought into the world, you know, pure and whole and our body, we get contaminated from, you know, the values of people that tell us that we can't do enough, you know, that we can't be what we want to be. You know, as women, we probably had to fight a little harder, you know, to go to chiropractic and to medical school because we're women. Um, but then we see contamination from, you know, the toxins and everything that's in our world too, which can contribute toward illness. That's but right. when we start to realize, listening to our body, and I love that you said that, like alcohol doesn't like settle with you, it doesn't resonate anymore. And I know for me too, there's things now that I do that I, if I do them, like my body just says, well, that doesn't go over well with you. And I think that for me, mindfulness and the meditation brings back that awareness. Cause I think people lost it, right? Like they just don't seem to get what does my body feel like? Because they're filling up on coffee, they're filling up on sugar, they're filling up on Netflix, or they're filling up on social media and they don't sit and feel just what the emotions that are going on in their bodies. And that's where the meditation is so helpful. Just pause, stop, sit, turn everything off, and be honest about how you feel. And if you sit there and start crying, then praise the Lord, because that means you're starting to feel something. Everything, what, if you're not feeling anything, then that's a problem. And I have patients that just seem to be sensitive to a lot of foods like uh like it, or no not like they say well when i have that chip those bags that bag of chips like it feels so sick you know what's wrong with me i'll say you are highly intelligent you the innate the innate intelligence of your body is working it's when you don't feel that that's a problem and so the signals you get are very important and they are the signals we need to be well and to be, be familiar with what could be harmful to us physically and uh, mentally. So, um, I, I think if you're feeling, if you're getting the signals, it's a gift. It truly is. It's a gift. And it's all that ability if we just slow down a little, you know, because I think in our busy world and, you know, despite everything that's going on with COVID for many people, it has given them a little bit of time to realize that, you know, health is wealth. Health is my number one thing. Cause this body, it's not going to last very long. Um, we've got, you know, maybe a hundred years on the planet, but try to keep this as well as we can while we're here. Absolutely. Um, I always think about the centurions that are 120 years old and they're living in the mountains of Peru and carrying their own water and growing their vegetables. And I mean, you know, why, why can't that be me? And I, I, I fully intend it to be me. Um, I'm going to do the best I can so that I live a full life and uh, be well in my own home and plant my own garden and still ride my bike and still hike and be in the woods and be close to nature. That's my, with all the changes I've made in my life, that's my plan. So uh, if it doesn't work, if it doesn't happen, then it's, then I've done everything I can possibly do to be well. And, um, that's pretty much all we can do is just ch change how we eat, move and think or consider better ways how we can eat, move and think. And I, I believe we can truly transform our lives that way, Tiffany. I really, truly do. Well, those are pretty easy principles, right? If we really want to distill it, what we eat, yeah. putting in nutritious things and taking away the sugar yeah. how we move or just moving our bodies every day like you said walking which is the best exercise <laughs> and how we think and you said taking that moment to stop and just pause 
take in that moment to see what's happening. Absolutely. So how do we uh, sell this to everybody, Lynn, and tell them that this is transformation. This is how it happens, right? <laughs> Well, I think you and I are great examples, Tiffany. I really do. I mean, I look at you, you got, you know, you're vibrant, you got you got a lot of great energy coming off of you and you know, you're motivated and you're motivated because you you experience that yourself like you eat well, move well, think well. And so I think together um we can work together, promote um the nutrition uh, promote the movement, promote the meditation, and truly, to one needs to be truly doing that. Each of those, doing something in each category to to feel better. Because if you're you're exercising but you're not eating well, you're still going to have a lot of pain and dysfunction. And if you're eating well but you're not moving, then you're still going to have issues so if you can if the if the if you if the individual is finally tired of feeling tired then call my office ask to speak to me book an appointment they can go through your program the 21 gut repair 21 day uh gut health repair program it's excellent and tiffany it's incredibly affordable you're, you're being very generous. I think it was $120 for the 21 days and you get daily video tips and you get the Zoom sessions with yourself. It's, it's very generous of you and you are, you truly are um, honest and you have a high level of integrity and we're truly grateful to have you in our community here in Miramichi. So I will certainly be promoting your program. Um, I think it believe, I believe it starts November 1st. We send out, I think we sent out over 500 emails to, to my patient base last time. And I have patients that did start the program and they were really, really happy with it. And I think they're gonna do it again in November. So they're doing like, like doing the 21 days, but they're realizing how good they feel. And then they wanna do another 21 days, more 20, another, 21 days. So eventually they realize, hmm, this is not just a temporary change, temporary uh, program. It's actually a lifestyle change because once I stay on, you know, Dr. Keenan's program, I, I just feel well. I think more well, I move more well, and I look better and I feel better. So uh, I will be certainly uh, promoting your program here at the office and uh, I want to thank you again for putting it together because I, you know, I thought about it myself many times and I do it one on one with my patients, but you package it uh, quite nicely and patients love recipes and I'm not one for recipes to be honest. I'll just throw a salad together and whip up my own uh, salad dressing, but uh, the recipes are, are something that uh, patients really or people really look forward to. Well, I just wanted to make something that it helped me, you know, when I transform my own gut to, to heal. And I see so many people that ex, that need the help. And, uh, you know, when you can have some group support, it helps a long way. Because we know this journey, it's hard alone. You know, that's why you're there. So people can come and help you, you know, and you can help them with their, their pain or their conditions. But when we get in a group, I think the environment's even better because we get... Uh, a lot of support and it's good to know for all of us that you know um we don't have to do this alone and that we're all struggling on the same levels you know we all it doesn't matter you know you've traveled to lynn like i have and it doesn't matter where you go in the world that people are, are suffering whether it's pain food nutrition lack of money too much money you know um so we all have this, those same personal struggles and the more that we can kind of get together and share that with others and uh that's why it's been so good to meet with you and, and hopefully to get this message out to others in our community, um, that there is hope, um, that transformation can happen. They don't have to live in pain. They can have a life of, of movement, vitality, playing with their grandkids, you know, feeling good, not feeling down every day. Um, and they just need to reach out and come to one of us. To get Absolutely. Help. Absolutely. 
So Lynn, what are your contact details? Uh, what's the best way just to call the office or do you have an email or Facebook? Um, we are on Facebook and I do have a website uh, as well. We are uh, in, in, on Google. If you just Google my name, um, Dr. Lynn Glazier Goldie, you'll get our office and um, you know, I'd be happy to uh, you know, meet more new uh, individuals who are looking to make a change to if they're t if you're tired of, of not feeling well then I, I know there's um, the ways like this ways I could assist in helping uh, helping that individual be more well well, thanks so much, Lynn. I'll make sure that I put the contacts in the uh, in the notes and everything from the program today. Great. Thank you. Well, so great speaking with you, Tiffany. You too. Have a wonderful day. Okay, you too. Bye-bye.